You was at the club, bottoms up, when I first met you. <sighs> I hate that I did that. Listen, every single week I am increasingly convinced that 2018 was the best year for music this decade. Sure, that's debatable, to each their own, really. Uh, when it came to my experience with music last year, I had never uh, experienced like as big a determination to go out and explore and see what other artists were doing. Uh, stuff outside the usual norm that music circles tend to cover. I'm sure there are a lot of factors to that. Maybe just like how much creative freedom we have now. Uh, anyone can just upload stuff at like whenever they want, wherever they want and have their own niche following. They have a lot to be inspired by. There's so much access to different music to listen to. I don't know, it's an interesting thing to talk about but I really wanted to just talk about just the music that came out last year. Even in July, I was I was just and there was so much amazing music that came out. Then when I was trying to order like a conclusive list, like top 50 albums, top 50 songs, there was so much I had to cut out. What I cover on the channel probably only represents like 40% of what I listened to that year. Even now, I'm coming across albums that I reckon could have made that list had I heard them at the time. And I thought that fresh into this year. Why not just reflect on some of the albums last year that I missed, uh, stuff that I didn't get to cover, stuff that I didn't get to put in the list, because I think it would be a massive shame if I just let them like gather dust and be left behind, especially with how quickly we absorb and consume music nowadays. Father's Awful Swim is an album full of brief, quirky, hilarious hip-hop cuts inspired by trap rap of course, but just with a really uh, kind of naughty personality to them. Like some of this shit is just so stupid, but it's so brilliant. Black Boots Tattoos, uh, hair long like several. I heard it literally after I uploaded that 2018 list and I swear if I had heard it beforehand, it would have been like, it would have been on there. It would have been on there for sure. Borzoi is an art punk band, thanks to my friend Sage for introducing this to me. His tutor is part of this band, and th ooh, this is, ooh, it's groovy, it's catchy, it's one of the coolest art punk records I've heard in a long, long time. It's not too clean, it's got a bit of jagged edge to it, but it's also got that groove, it's got that swagger to it, and I think that's what makes it really stand out. Bod is an artist that I'm going to be keeping an eye on into the future because their music is beautiful, it's serene, but it's also so eclectic. It draws from a lot of influences uh, musically like post-industrial music, uh, glitch, it's, uh, Chinese folk music is, is like the big one. It's, it's organized a little bit like a sound collage, perfect for rainy days, perfect for introspective train rides, all of that. You've heard about this one, I know you have, but I'm here to shill it because this one grew on me like a motherfucker. I think seeing Parquet Quartz live and that being the most exhausting experience of my life probably helped me warm up to this album and the rest of Parquet Quartz post-punk music as well. I really appreciate the political messages, I think it's extremely clever. Topics like worker unionization, uh, jaded cynicism towards political issues, uh, climate change, being desensitized to violence, really difficult topics to provide like any sort of insight on, but they do it so well. And I didn't expect that because usually their music is so like, short and succinct, but they did it here and they've got groove as well. They can, they can put out a bop. Here's a short story. When I saw them live, they performed Almost Had to Start a Fight. And, you, and those of you that know that song know how in the middle it switches tempos, it speeds up all of a sudden. And I was not ready for the mosh pit that was going to start. I was thrust into the middle of it I moshed so hard that after the concert, I was gonna see Georgia Smith, bruh, I only made it through two songs of hers before I started like feeling sick and I had to like leave and, and have a sit down. And then I saw Courtney Barnett and cried. <laughs> incredible disco flavored alternative dance music. A lot of the songs are long, but uh, like the best dance music, you can get locked into those grooves for ages. Uh, like the best of dance punk, like LCD Sound System, Chick Chick Chick. Uh, these, this is just another artist to keep tabs on if you're into that sort of stuff. Like 
this might just be one of the scariest albums I've heard in a long, long time. Because you can tell that every single emotion that is screaming at you on this album is real. Like, this sounds like it comes from a place of, like, genuine fear. There are tracks on here that sound like someone banging on the door with all the energy that they have, screaming trying to get the hell out. <laughs> I think creating soundscapes inspired by instrumental hip hop and dub but used to create the uh, I don't know the image of like a war zone or like a, a post apocalyptic landscape is really cool. This one's really noisy, it's overwhelming, but it has that harrowing atmosphere you would associate with a concept like this. I can't see. This band comes from New Zealand. They're a prog rock band and, I don't know, the music shines so beautifully, like the cover here. This is a great outsider house. I think it's really creative. It's in its own lane sonically. I think it's perfect for autumn. I imagine just taking a walk out in the open, waiting for the leaves to fall, and listening to the first track on this thing. It's noise music. It really is. How far? How far? Lonnie Holly is an extremely intriguing artist to me. Most of his career, he made like visual art using objects, uh, just random objects, really. But he decided, like in his sixties, that he wanted to try translate a lot of the dilapidation and unrest into music. And I think. Last year he really hit his stride with Myth. I Woke Up was in my top 50 songs of that year, but over time the album has really grown on me. You never feel comfortable, not even once. And that's exactly the perspective that Lonnie Holly attempts to translate into his music here, if the song I Woke Up wasn't enough of an indication. A lot of you may be familiar with my love for black dresses, especially as uh, the album Waste Isolation dropped in my album list last year, as well as Rook's solo album. But what about Devi McCallion's album? Well, she put out another collaborative record with Katie Day, Australian songwriter. This is a great album, I love the sound play on this, they're like little vignettes of sound and pure feeling translated into music and I think it's fantastic. Very vague description but this thing is a lot more varied than you might expect. And again, if Black Dress's noisy, distorted, electro clash stuff isn't for you, then I highly recommend checking out some of the solo work of both Rook and Devi because that music still has the same punch, just with not the same exact sound, perhaps. <laughs> Alex Zhang Hungtai's Divine Weight is one of the most beautifully harrowing drone pieces I've heard last year. And I listened to a lot, but this one felt so enveloping. This one already sounds like it's in touch with the human experience, the, the human emotions that you would expect listening to something extremely dark and, and saddening. Gosh, this one's devastating, it really is. <laughs> This one is really interesting and it's basically two albums in one. The first half is uh, field recordings of Beijing, just like the streets of Beijing, but also manipulated into like a, a glitchy sense. And it creates this convoluted like experience of actually being in Beijing, like I guess the bustling, uh, busy lifestyle that you would have when you were living there and kind of traversing the streets. However, the second half is a deconstruction of Chinese pop, the way that it's all manipulated into glitchy soundscapes is also just as captivating as the first half. Two extremely different sides of one very valuable coin. And finally, um, this one was very unexpected. I hated this album when it dropped. And not because of its concept, I actually uh, really relate to this album's concepts about identity and not exactly knowing who you are and, and not kind of being afraid to express yourself sometimes. But I wasn't really a fan of like the musical ventures that Off Montreal have been taking as of late. Kevin Gates. Kevin Gates? Kevin Gates. As if. 
Kevin Barnes. Kevin Barnes' flirtations with synthesizers and modern music aesthetics like trap music especially that pop in uh, for a visit sometimes is actually really creative if not polarizing at first. I think over time I've just started to really love just how idiosyncratic and eccentric this one is. It really just doesn't apologize for how weird and wacky it is and, and really invites you to be just as weird and wacky as it is. And that's it. Thanks for watching guys.